getting there. I'm getting there. There we are. Turn you off. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're ready. We're cooking now. Live from Houston, Texas, it's Learn to Paint Tuesday with Ginger Cook and your co-host, Sammy. Sammy, dude. Boy, he's dressed for the warm weather, isn't he? Well, I guess he's um, anticipating we're going north or something. He doesn't understand Florida South, does he? <laughs> I guess he needs to uh, go back to a little training in the old school. Yeah, a back little to school with Sammy. Lesson. Hey guys, this is Ginger Cook. Welcome everybody. This is always fun. I hope you've been enjoying our pre-show kind of announcements. I think that's a good way to remind people that we're, you know, we're live on uh, Tuesdays and this is a fun thing. We're going to get right into it because John and I still have to pack tonight because we're heading out first thing tomorrow morning for a road trip to Florida and then on later to our my birthday cruise that John got me for my birthday last uh, February. You guys remember that from the videos. That was fun. So we're it's kind of a working vacation. We always have our internet with us. We pay extra on the ship to have full internet access. And so when uh, one of the things that, for instance, you may not know, but our members at gingercooklive.gallery, they get personal art coaching. They're constantly sending me in uh, their artwork for, for critiques and help, sometimes two or three times even on one painting. And what we do is I can still be able to, they can still reach me even though I'm on a ship sailing the Caribbean. Isn't that something? I mean, do you remember when it was long distance just to call like, you across know, 10 the street. Uh, across the street <laughs> practically? Um, yeah, I'm telling you what, uh, just uh, those of you who don't remember what long distance, get, the cell phone, is, everything's changed everything, but there was a time when, when long distance calls were the bane of everybody's phone bill. You just, you know, they're so upsetting. You, you know, cringe. particularly if you had kids who had boyfriends that lived in other parts of the city or state. Man, oh, was, that was a deal. It okay? was terrible, absolutely. Terrible, you know. So anyway, I'm just really glad that, you know, we have Internet, and it's a, it's cool, you know. I just have to say this is a great thing. All right, we'll get, get right down to it. Well, I want to thank our moderators, uh, Wendy and um, Kim, and I'm not sure if we have any other moderators no, on tonight. I but our not Sandra's on yet. Our, what our moderators do, they're volunteer, and they help keep some of the spammers off, you know, the people that are just on to disrupt our show. The thing that we, the reason we love about live shows, the reason we do them is because we know that you get a chance to meet other artists. It's a way to really socialize that you can't, can't get this anywhere else. And sometimes we'll lose a feed to hang in there with us. <laughs> if we really dropped off, we would just, what would happen? You know, let's talk about that. What would happen if he suddenly lost us and we had to restart? Well, take, we have to turn off the computer, start it again. It's usually three or four minutes. Then what you do, don't wait for an invitation. Just go back up to our channel and look to see what's live again. You know, it, it'll show you. Just keep you. refreshing her. Just keep refreshing your little uh, thingy up there in the left-hand corner of your computer. What is that called, the little thingy in the left-hand corner of the computer? It's called a refresh button. <laughs> refresh button. But it's like, on, on my Mac, it's like a little kind of a half circle arrow you know right just keep hitting it just refresh hitting it, it and see what happens so don't forget that and um and john we had a question as i'm gonna let me show you real quick what we're going to be painting oh, tonight could you? yeah i'd love to yeah, see it is oh, this you're cool do it there? okay this is the um this is called azalea garden reflections and houston's famous for azalea gardens i really like this i thought had a lot of people asking me for reflection pictures so this is what we're going to be doing. And if you will be so kind, John, as to kind of get, get, put the camera down toward our, uh, our stuff. We're starting with the you know, 8x10 canvas. Let me just show you our paints. It's titanium white, zinc white, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, dosmine purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, burnt umber, magenta, naphthal crimson, and cad red medium. Now these are just, there's nothing new here. This is what we always do. There's no real big surprises here. With for the paint. I mean, I repeat it because people say, I wish you'd put your list up in the front. But if you get to know us, you, you'll know that. And if you haven't seen that video we've got on the complete materials list that I recommend for Ginger Cook, it's on YouTube. It's also on our channel, gingercooklive.gallery. And it's a video of all the stuff I recommend down to the rulers and the T-squares and the chalk and everything. Okay. And that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, you're, that's what you really need uh, to get going with. And I think we're going to also answer a couple other questions that came up tonight. So the first thing um, I want to do is just invite um, everybody who has not subscribed yet to our channel that is in view of a computer. It was pointed out to me yesterday in a very kind uh, message 
that sometimes someone's watching this on the TV or their phone or wherever, they can't subscribe. But you're going to come back around anyway. And just if you haven't done it, please do. So 50% uh, of the people that watch these videos aren't sub subscribing to them um, pretty much across YouTube. Look, when we go up, that's a nice way to say thank you for what we do. So if you haven't subscribed, and also there's that little bell underneath. So if you want to be aware of the live stuff that's coming up, John and I think we can... Um, we're going to be shooting a lot of little videos on our trip and, and find places on the internet where we can upload them, kind of take you with us if we can. And uh, if you want to get notifications of that, well, if you have that little bell um, uh, pushed, uh, you know, then your computer will tell you when we're on. So those are some good things to do. Okay, let's start by kind of, um, uh, we're going to take, uh, use our fingers as a ruler. I love doing that, don't you? So I'm going to say, I'm going to take four fingers come down here about like this and over here about like that and I'm just going to kind of draw a line across like that and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom like that line across here like that and I'm going to say that uh, kind of divided the canvas into thirds all right but not completely thirds because that's like a you know, five fingers in this four and four all right so then I want to take a brush like this this is a, just a bright brush I'm going to wet it and I'm going to dampen it up and um, incidentally uh, you guys um, I want to mention this too. If you're a member of gingercooklive.gallery, remember you don't get, get personal art coaching on the exclusive videos that you get from us every month, you know, the really the fantastic ones, but anything on YouTube you also get personal art coaching with too. Remember that. And then of course don't forget that once a month you can send in an, an original creative piece and you can get help with that. So I, th I just wanted to throw in a plug for us. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to start with some white paint, okay? And um, I want to make a light sky color. And then I'm going to take a little tiny bit of cad red medium, like that, kind of make a peach color. That's easy, right? A little tiny ultramarine blue. And I'm going to make sort of this gray-blue sky color. All right, a little more cad red medium. All right. Now, a little tiny bit more ultramarine blue. There we go. There's my kind of gray, purpley gray sky color. And so what I want to do now, using my brush like this, I'm just going to come down, just... Uh, down and across, and uh, this is kind of this is really fun. You, you'll be just amazed at how easy this is. I'm going to come down like this, and all the way across like that. And then let's do the same thing on the bottom. Let's just come up from the bottom. Remember, ponds are a reflection. They're like a mirror of whatever uh, you know what's going on in front of them. So we need to get this color. So let's just come out here like this. We'll probably be doing a lot of overlapping, but I'm going to come up about like that and say, "There's our." There's our color. That's our sky. All right, that's easy. And there's our ponds part. Okay. Now, what else could we do as long as we're doing that? Okay. Well, um, I think I'll take a little bit of a burnt umber on my brush just for the heck of it. And I'm going to come just, let's see, where am I? About uh, four fingers up here. I'm just going to start like this, come across like this, and zigzag down a little bit. Make a little, a little area for a little. Um, little area for my pond like that just something a little zigzaggy here like that there's the bank of my pond okay that was easy yeah so I know that's going to be pond this is going to be the rest of this is going to be landscape okay see maybe I can I don't know can you kind of I want you to kind of see what I'm doing here can you kind of see where we're going so there's I might want to take that pond and zigzag it up just a little bit higher here like this just say that it came up a little bit higher like that, and then back, kind of, kind of zigzag it. Okay, there you go. You seem we'll to be just pull like today. down. Are you, are you in the normal position? I don't know. Am I? Maybe not. Shall I move it over here? Well, Better? Like this? Typically, Better? I have you straight up and down, which is where. All right. Is this better? This is where you're supposed to be. Oh, you see the you see the white mark? No. What white mark? This one? Oh, yeah, that one. That's where you're supposed to be. No, I don't think so. Uh, um, do you know why I put the white mark there? I give up. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so the camera's more up and down and I'm not at an angle? Oh, gosh. Oh, you, yeah. just think, you think of everything, John. Okay, well, whatever. I'll move over. I can move over. Moving over. Ha -ha. Thank All right, you. so try to bring the brush strokes down a little bit. That's one of the little tricks. Just, just bring everything down. Just pull it down. Okay, now let's take a little bit of yellow. And let's take a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. And um, let's take a little bit of white. There we go, maybe a tiny little bit of burnt umber, okay? And uh, let's just start in here with some brush. Let's just lay in some grass like this, as long as we've got the 
You notice I didn't rinse my brush, I just kept playing with it. Or just didn't look at the direction of the brush strokes. Okay, now some questions have come up. Maybe I can answer why I'm painting. Also, we will probably play an art trivia game today. It's called Stump the Artist. So you guys have been winning. It's been, I think it's uh, uh, Artist Zero yesterday, uh, uh, Group Two. It's okay. <laughs> let's, let's try one while I'm painting this in here. First Number we'll five. This is an art trivia game where it's called Stump the Artist. And how this works, uh, here's one of the things, if you're live, if, you, if you're watching this later, you don't get to play. Sorry, but of course you can see <laughs> if you can guess the answers. One of the things is group interaction. Get to know some of the people around the world that are watching us. It's a lot of fun. Kind of join in on the comments. So, all right. So we've got... Um, we want to say a big thank you to Marty for the donation. Oh, gosh. Marty, thank you for that. Is that the same Marty we might see in Pensacola? No, this is Marty Long. The other one's Marty Dennis, if I remember correctly. It is Marty Dennis. Where are we meeting? Are we, uh, where are we meeting people? That'd be Pensacola. Pensacola uh, tomorrow, um, on our way through. Just sort of an impromptu thing. Somebody said, "Gosh, if you if we if you, we were close by the freeway, could you stop in on your drive and say hi?" And uh, and we said yes. And I think that was Marty Dennis, right? Yeah. Said it was that. Marty Dennis. And she's kind of organizing it. And somewhere around between 5:30 and 6, we'll probably be there tomorrow, assuming we can get out of Dodge here. You ever did your parents used to say that if we can get out of get Dodge? Get out of Dodge on time. And how many P stops we've got to make? Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, that's true. But, it's all um, part of it. All, part, all of part of it. All right. So the road trip. Road trip. We've got road the trip. Cheetos. I mean, we have got the stuff for the road trip. John actually ordered me some Cheetos. Right, the, the condition was she has to hang her head out of the window as she eats them. Yeah, just, just, and he got <laughs> special wipes so he wouldn't ruin the car. And um, I, don't, I don't know, it's so funny. Um, just, hey. it, who doesn't eat Cheetos on a road trip? Uh, I mean, they're like the me. food of the gods, right? Uh, hey, I've got a question for you. Yeah, I like questions. How do you call the flat surface on which a painter mixes paints? We are giving this stuff away today, Oh, so you got a better question than no, that. No, we're going to start off easy. All right, all right, you guys. How do you, what do you call the thing? How? Yeah, what? How, no, it says how. How do you call the surf the flat surface on which a painter mixes paints? Okay. Now notice I add the little phthalo blue to this now. I'm changing the the color of this um, grass a little bit, like that little bit coming up here like this. Now I'm coming into the water. Now I want you to see this. I'm coming into the water. A little tiny water on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to come into the water like this with a little bit of green, just pulling the brush strokes down. I want you to kind of see that as I'm doing it because we're going to be layering all this. Oh, that's such an easy question. That's like we're all artists. <laughs> you know, I suppose we should play a music trivia one. Oh, none of no, us know the no, first no, thing no. about that, right? Uh -uh. You know, we'd all flunk on that. But anyway, yeah, that's, um, yeah, see, let's just pull some of this uh, green down. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide and mix in that. Okay, Suzanne's and palette, Michelle's palette, Manette's palette, Julie's palette, Tia's palette, Anne's palette. Say uh, that slower. Come on. They all went to all the trouble uh, to write it. They're flying by. You want me to name them or not? Yeah, I do. I do. Heidi I do. Ground, Linda Palette, Shelley Palette, Christopher Palette. Palette. <laughs> it's like Ivan it's Whistle. Really? I don't know what a whistle will be in that case. Tina Pallet. I know Lucy who his Pallet. mother was. Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you had to do that. <laughs> All right. Now, notice I've added a little Lori phthalo says, blue. Here, palette, here, palette. Okay. Adding a little phthalo blue, and I'm going to come up here like this and start changing and the green. And Winnie's asking, what, do, what colors does she use to make that green? Oh, you're doing a green now? Yeah. Well, I, I did a yellow oxide and white, a little ultramarine blue, and then I switched to phthalo. I've got all these different greens in here, okay? Um, if you've got ultramarine blue and phthalo, uh, and, and phthalo blue, it's <laughs> ultramarine blue red shade if you're buying Liquitex, and phthalo uh, blue green shade if it's Liquitex. Everybody else just calls it ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, but you know, <laughs> what, what can I tell you? Okay, so I'm gonna bring, so now I'm just, uh, so I've mixed two different greens, and I'm just gonna start bringing some colors into the water like this, down like this. And all the brush strokes are going down. And if I add a little more phthalo blue, because I can see the color in the water that I'm going to want. Now look, I add a little tiny bit of phthalo blue to that. Now look what happens. Now see, I've changed the color one more time in here. And um, I didn't see you do an overall underpainting on this one, did you? No, we're just kind of layering in the greens. And I'm putting a little of oh. this uh, phthalo blue color, you know, a little bit on the grass too in a few places. This grass is all layered. 
That was fun. Okay, and so this is the, this is fun. So that was a good question, but you can do better than that, John. Here you we go. You gotta give me a better number. Two. Marty Marty Dennis says it's styrofoam plates is the right answer. Styrofoam plates. Well, remember, that's remember true. The good old that, days? That's true. That's, that's what we use in the good and, old days. And, and, and well, I, and I still for small paintings like a styrofoam plate. But I have to say, if this is a, these uh, these palettes like this are very nice. Uh, these paper, wax paper palettes are very nice for a big area, particularly when you're, you know, mixing a lot of colors, you know, but I've, you know, yours do styrofoam plates. Now, this brush is going in the water, but we're still into the greens, all right? Everybody tracking with me? We're going to take this uh, green again and start with a little white, a little yellow oxide, a little white, tiny bit of ultramarine blue, tiny bit of blue. Surely it will. All right. Who's it's, Shirley? Is she here? Uh, is she? Do we have a Shirley here? All right, so, 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 all right, back here on this side, you see that almost touching the corner here, but make it a little bit uneven, all right? Then we're going to come over onto the other side, do the same thing, like that. We're bringing this up here like this. Now, one of the things that, you know, people say, why do you do this live when you have the feed problem? It's we really do it because of the camaraderie and the fact that we can interact with the audience. People ask us questions. Somebody asked us the other day, I think we were doing a pansy basket, and this is one of our members doing the pansy basket, and she was using um, a basic paint, a basic acrylic, and had found that for her, getting subtle tones in the flowers, they, they were just, they were, they were more opaque, they weren't, they weren't those pretty subtle, subtle glazing colors. And then somebody else wrote us and said, what do you mean by glazing? Well, if you think about it, if you wear a white shirt and you spill coffee on it, you've glazed it, okay? <laughs> You know, you've, tinted, you've gone over something light and you've slightly changed the color. And um, t tinting is if you're adding, but if you have no white on it, if you're adding white, you're sort of, that's sort of a tint. But glazing is usually a, like a, say, a cult, culture, color like, say, ultramarine blue with water or purple with water, magenta with water, or chances are not yellow, but... Um, but, you know, the others, you know, your different colors, your burnt siennas. And when you add water to them, let me keep painting as I'm telling you this. When you add water to them or glazing medium, okay, you add glazing medium, then what happens is that um, you can go over a dark, a, a lighter color with that in a little water and you will slightly change it and it will have a translucent quality to it. Very, not dissimilar, may I say this, not dissimilar to, say, watercolor. Okay, not not that dissimilar to watercolor. So I'm going to put some of this color up in here too, up here in our bushes. This lighter color, right, like this. So I will show you. I'm going to show you tonight how how that works. We've talked about it before. We have complete lessons on GingerCookLive.gallery on glazing and stuff. In fact, just for a second, I want to show you this. Um, speaking of glazing, um, let me just uh, let me just show you this oh. picture. Uh, I believe this, that's upside down, but I'm going to go out on a limb because it is. You're upside right. Down. It, it, it is. It's, up, it's upside down. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you this picture. This is a uh, lily pond. I've got a very small one on our website for our wave and water people. Very small. And I wanted to show you what would happen. This is just exclusively um, for our wave and water masterclass people. But this entire thing was done with a palette knife. Can you zoom in, John? This entire thing was done with a palette knife. And then some of these colors on the lily pads were glazed in later. But uh, can you see, can you guys see the, te the great texture on this? All, all the whole thing was done. Now, this is a good example for, uh, for a painting this size. But where this gets impressive is if you do something like this 30 by 40 and really use, we're, we're using heavy uh, modeling paste to get this to happen. It's very pretty. If you want something more translucent, you would use uh, extra heavy uh, gels. Anyway, I just had to show you that. No one's seen that yet. That was released today for our Wave and Water Masterclass people. I think they weren't expecting it, and I knew that they would be happy to see that, so I just wanted to mention that. Okay, I hate to be a pain, but could you remove the pencils from underneath your canvas? Sure. Thank you. And um, <laughs> It's going to be a long trip, isn't it? It's going to be a long <laughs> trip. Isn't that so funny when you say that? <laughs> just so, so say that. You know, when... Cinnamon's dad and I were first uh, married. The first week we were together, Cinnamon's dad, you see, what was I about? Just turned 18. And um, he had this an extremely annoying habit of um, slurping his cereal and clanking the spoon on his teeth. <laughs> I hope oh he's my not.
a story, but it's, I just have to shut it. So remind, really just, um, I, I thought, you know, we've only been together a little while. I probably can say something. So I, I just politely asked him, it was at breakfast one morning, and I said, gosh, do you think that um, you might not clink the spoon on your teeth and slurp your cereal? Which turned out to be a hereditary thing. His mother did it, too. Uh, and we won't go into that. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know. And um, he looked at me and smiled. And you have to understand, he was like 10 years older than me and was always lording it over like, he like he knew better, you know, and he looked at me, and smiled very condescendingly, and said, "Sure." He said, "Do you want to take the scrambled egg off the middle of your forehead?" And then after that, we never discussed table manners again. That was it. <laughs> that was it. He just slurped the cereal, and I kept with the scrambled egg, and we just left it alone. All right, it. I'm going to dry this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to turn you down then. Okay. That, that's a great story, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, she's drying that. Ooh, I, did I turn myself up real loud? My, everything's set up differently now, and I haven't got it where I really want it yet. Um, hopefully, we're doing okay. Um, as we're traveling, I see we're buffering again. As we're traveling for the next few weeks, we will try to... We, we do have recorded lessons that will be coming out on t Mondays and Tuesdays for you for the next three weeks. Some great lessons. We're going to show you some of them. Um, we've also going to try to, every time we get into a port, you know, we can get a Wi-Fi. Anytime we can snatch somebody's Wi-Fi, we're going to try to go up real live, do, do something quickly. All right, can you talk to see if I got you back where I need you? Are we back? Uh, we, I think so. All right. We'll see what happens. So, okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is take a little uh, 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 zinc white, which is your very transparent white, and a, and a little bit of water on the brush, and then wipe it off, and a little bit of zinc white, and kind of thin it out, maybe wipe it off on a rag here. Then I want to come up here like this and make this sort of this. Remember, we made a little darker sky than I wanted. And then we're going to come over this green, which I dried. Okay. I'm going to go very gently because I'm not trying to erase it. I'm just pushing this green back, coming over here like this. And um, just uh, this is our second layer on the sky. This is with the mixing white. This is one of Thomas Kincaid's great tricks was to, uh, you know, push all the background back. You know, with this like a zinc white or something, you know. That's a really, you know, you push the background back. And let's come down here into our water and do something very similar, too. We'll just uh, create a little bit of um, a lighter color down here in the water. Just a couple places. Just like that. And if we can always add more, but just a little bit like that. This doesn't take a lot of zinc white. You took, you, the brush is very flat when you do it. Make sure this is really dry or it's going to not, you know, you're not trying to smear the green around. You're trying to just kind of push it back. Okay. Hey, I have a question. Sure. What, what you got going here? St. Sebastian is often depicted being a martyr. What did he suffer? What did he suffer? St. Sebastian? St. Sebastian is often depicted, depicted being a martyr. What did he suffer? He is slowly grilled, grilled to death. He is attached to a tree and penetrated by arrows. He is drawn and drowned in a barrel. Now this was obviously we, this was a painting of his death. I because I, I, did we just switch categories and no. we just went into religious <laughs> history? I mean, what happened here? I'm still right. in art. Well, you, guys you wanted are, something tougher. I got it for okay, you. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to take this little uh, little liner brush like this, a little longer yeah, handle, and I'm just going to I'm going to just take a little bit of water on the brush. This is one of these little tiny liner brushes. Hold it almost vertical like this, and I'm going to create some little branches. Going to suggest there's a little tree here. Maybe I might even do a little bit of water. Roll it on the tips like this. Hold it straight up like that. There you go. All right, we're going to go for the question there, again. There's a tree there. We're going to put a little tree here. We're going to hey, push can, a little can harder. Can we have quiet over there? These people want to hear the question again. Do they? But this is important. Okay. St. Sebastian is often depicted being, being martyred. What did he suffer? He is slowly grilled, grilled, G-R-I-L-L-E-D, to death. He is attached <laughs> to a tree and penetrated by arrows, or he is drowned in a barrel. So as opposed to this is that this is the, the death that the artist depicted for him, obviously. Yeah, who's and uh, I think you're talking about was he barbecued? <laughs> um, I think I that's think, what grilling is. Yeah, I think he was barbecued and he was, uh, you know. Donna Donna says dr uh, drowned in a barrel. Tia saying arrows. Manette says burned. Uh, Lori says penetrated with the arrows. Okay. 
And Judy's saying funerals bring out the worst in families. I don't think that's related. <laughs> <laughs> they do, don't they? That's a good point, too, don't, don't they? I don't like Tanya this. Tanya says gonna... arrows. James says arrows. Tammy says arrows. He was penetrated by arrows. I remember now, says Gail. So these people know this guy. They've Well, but perhaps they've seen the, the painting. It's oh. a famous painting, right? Uh, slowly grilled to death. Yikes. That's Cindy's comment. Barbara well, says I mean, burn. that's that's a, this Marty is, Dennis is saying this is frowning. A, this is a family show, darling. <laughs> All right, gonna put a Barbecued little barbecued from Beverly. Barbecued. I mean, I think that's really what you're talking about when you say slowly grilled to death, right? I would think so. Ivan's <laughs> saying shot with arrows. Catherine is saying drowned. Uh, Judy is saying fried green tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Judy always has something. Can I guess that he was glazed? That's good. Okay. Arrows, Andrew St. Arrows. Oh, welcome, Andrew. Nice to have you here today. I saw you chatting with Sammy earlier. I guess you guys are getting ready for big plans, a big picnic on Haiti. Okay, so we're, well, we're doing this. Now you're going to have to let them, let them in because if anybody wants any of this lesson, they're gonna, we're going to have to have a heads up here, John. As fun as your game is, but, we're going to... Okay, so what, okay, stump the artist. What's the artist say? Um, arrows. Arrows is the correct answer, folks. Give yourself 10 points if you've got arrows. And the artist gets 10 points. Woohoo! Yeah, All right. Excellent. Now I'm taking purple and magenta. You guys seeing that? Purple and magenta. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I have a brand new fan brush. I'm getting in for this. I have a brand new fan brush. People said, how do you make one of these work? Now this isn't the super duper one cinnamon's getting made. This is made by, let's just, let's just get down to the glasses. Because I have, I've had this probably for, it's a number two. I've had it by Silverstone. It's 1104 fan um, by Silverstone Brushes, which is different than, and it's made in Japan. Okay? There you and go. There it goes. And it's fairly stiff. Okay, so we'll see. All right, we're going <laughs> to just do a little, a little tiny bit of water on it. Probably has some starch on it. I should have rinsed it off, but I didn't. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to suggest... Well, what we know for sure is that we've got quite a bit of um, a dark coming in here like this. This is a dark, um, this is all dark down in here. Now, as I come up here, I'm going to use just the part of it, all right, just like the corner of it. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to suggest that this is, um, we've got these sort of branches that are coming off like this. Again, just using the corner of it like that. And I realize this is a special edition YouTube event. She has never used a fan brush in her life before. I've used them before. I just don't no, teach no. with them. <laughs> I just don't teach with them. Of course I've used them before. And I dismiss them as being kind of dumb, but that's all right. Everybody I asks about it. I think it's kind of cool it. looking so far. Well, I mean, you get, a, you get a certain, there's a certain plant that lends itself very nicely to this brush. You know, not every tree on the planet is a fan brush tree, but there can be a few, right? So we know we want it kind of dark down here, right? Now, this is a probably, now, here's the deal. Um, that has to um, dry. Um, so I'm going to just put the fan brush in water for now, and we'll just move on and do something else. How's that? Because like that's got to dry. So I'm going to take a regular brush now and use that same color, and I'm going to come over here like this. You see how much more efficient this is. And I'm going to suggest that down about in here, come, somewhere about in here in our grass, we've got some plants that are going to be coming this way. To our tree. Joanne would like, like to that. know does ginger or anyone else have tips on removing the buildup paint at the base of the brush? Um, yeah, you've got, yeah. Um, you, yes, you know, uh, the question I have for you is that you're talking about um, when, when it's dry and you've washed it a bunch of times and it keeps building up, you're going to have to soak that brush. Um, if it's been drying on you, okay? So that, that's what I would say. You're going to have to soak that brush. Okay, so here's our dark uh, color. Let's put a little bit of burnt umber in this, a tiny bit, right, in this one because we've got a darker thing over here. I'm going to come in here like this and just suggest that this is our line for our plants. Now, the plants are all having some sort of dark background up into here, okay, like that. So this is where our plants are going to be. This is the dark background for our, our plants. I don't want to get up too high. All right. Now, as long as I'm in that color, I'm going to darken up the background here with our um, um, our pond. Okay. Like that. And just say, here's our bank on our pond. All right. Now, at this point, uh, John, could you do me a favor? I, I want to show how to do a little glazing 
while sure. some of this is drying. So Absolutely. while this is, we're kind of fooling around with this. Um, you you notice I put a little tree in here. I'm going to come back to my my greens, make that same kind of background green. I just in one of those little painted canvases you've got. I want to just show people how you might. I want to show about a little bit about glazing too. All right, now I've got this tree here. So now this is the we we did some mixing white. So now I'm going to come over this tree like that. That's why I wasn't too much worried about it. Make a slightly darker green, okay, and say that. Um, there we go. I'm just. This is our next layer of dark green, and even in here too, we're just kind of. We put the tree in, and we're just kind of. Adding a second layer of green, and if we're adding a second layer of green, let's pull some of that in here like this, down into our water. Yeah, just anything is fine. This pink, pink is fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. Try and find a white one. Okay, that's fine. That we can use that, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So. Um, all right, so we're now we're just starting to we're going to start putting while we're waiting for this to dry. Let's play with the grass. Let's add a little more white to the grass, and now using this downward stroke, just up and down vertical stroke and a bright brush, we're going to start pulling uh, lighter green here and this toward the center here like that. And then if we're going to do that, then let's pull it down into our water, like this. Okay. Start pulling some color into the water like that. Then maybe down in here, we're going to just add some green. So it's uh, it's all about layers here at this point. We haven't done any of the we haven't done any of the color, but I know, I, for instance, I want it darker green down here, like that. And all the brush strokes are up and down. That's that's the important thing. That they're all uh, up and down. T T is asking: Should the reflections be lighter or darker than the original object? The, the reflections are generally lighter. They're lighter and more muted. Not necessarily lighter, but they're more muted. Um, I don't know how else to say it. So they're not as bright. For instance, if you were doing, if you had a red building, a red door, and you were reflecting it in the cement, the, it would be, the door would probably be, in that case, darker. Like a maroon. You know, it would be darker and less bright. So yeah. it depends on what it's reflecting. But it's definitely, they're, they're not as bright. That, that, that you can take, you know, you can look. And, you know, this is where it helps to observe nature a little bit. Really, to when you're out somewhere looking at stuff, let's add a little yellow oxide to that. Now I'm going to start another little bit of bright yellow in here. See, Probably putting that on the on the on the grass right in here. Did you know that yellow is often cons considered brighter than white when you're putting things? It draws the eye really fast. If you put a big bright yellow flower back here, that would just bring your eye way back there. You you want to be careful not to not to do that. All right, so I've got that that. Here's a little bit of. A gold down here in the water here. I'm going to add some of that. Okay. And you'll notice I'm just, just putting in a few of these colors. Everything's going down. It gets prettier because of all the layers of color. Now I could take a little bit of this, um, this uh, remember here's our bank color here and I might bring a little bit of the bank down in here like this. Just start bringing it down. Put a little water on my brush. Wipe it off. Now there's a lot of paint on my brush. Anyway, so this is a little, it's a little softer. I started to put some um, reflections thank you, from the Anne bank Marie. in the water. Let's thank Anne Marie for the donation. Greatly oh, thank appreciate gosh, it. that's really nice. So thank you very much, you guys. We really, uh, 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 really, really appreciate it. Um, here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see how we're starting to put. But the trick is, all the brush strokes get pulled down. That's what you kind of want to remember. I don't think I've done in a lot of paintings where we've done uh, reflections. Last night. We did a little bit with the um, with the with the mailboxes and and the puddle in front. Everybody remembers stepping into the water to, you know, it's your turn. You got to get the mail, right? But um, you know, so. Can we talk about your shirt for a half a second, please? Sure. That my shirt is. Uh, uh, don't you love it? It says love. Is it sparkly? Does it have sparkles on it? No. No, I don't no, think there's, it's there's, there's it's no sparkles. I I tell you what, I get I get I shirts like this because if I get paint on them anywhere. It looks like it was part of the plan, and I find these on. I I spent hours looking for these. I, every every day, Woot comes out with a new shirt, and probably in a whole year, I might find three I like out of 365 shirts. Okay, but um, but you know, as artists, you guys, you know, they take submissions. You can submit artwork, and if people vote your art, your art, and they they make the shirt. Did you guys know that? You know, you can become. 
you know, I think a lot of the, the, the shirts that are on there are very clever. They're kind of, um, you know, they're, they're less about art and more about clever. This, I think, is clever with the love spelled in it. Okay, so this is kind of drying a little bit. I'm kind of working on that a little bit like that. And um, I brought a little of this, little bit of this down here. Um, Kathy would like to know, did Ginger use a reference photo on this particular painting? Ginger did use a reference photo. Would you like to see it? Could we? Sure. Ooh. Ginger did use a reference photo on the painting, Does see? Does Ginger remember where she got that from? Ginger got this from Pixabay. Does Ginger remember what the search engine was that she used? I forget. Gardens, okay. I think. I think gardens. I think gardens. Good luck. It's like thousands <laughs> of gardens, right? Gardens, right? But it's pretty, right? Yeah. That That's the reference photo, okay? But uh, let's see. How did I get water on this one? Oh, good. All right. So now, all right. So you can kind of see where we're going here. And now that one, you see we had to change that quite a bit. That had all this dark in the water. And that's not that pretty. Guess what? So we didn't do it like that, okay? <laughs> This is just sorry. We just didn't. We're going to have a little bit of the dark in the water, but uh, but there's going to be less of that. Okay? Again, it's one of the gingerisms. Not married to the photo. Not married to the photo. And the problem is, if you guys, if you get married to the photo, you know, you see a photo like that, and it is hard not to be married to it, because uh, you know we can sit there and say, well, here's our tree. We could have our tree coming down here like this, in the water like this, and skip a space or something like that, and maybe a. You know, suggest a branch coming out like this. Just, you know, you can play with that a little bit. Just remember, it's a mirror image, okay? Now, I wonder if this is dry enough. We'll, we'll see what happens. All right, back to our, um, where'd that little fan brush go? Okay, so back to the fan brush. Okay, we're getting the water out of it. Now, what we want, and I'm probably going to need a palette knife for this. We're going to take some of this color, this magenta color, and some uh, mixing white, or zinc white, okay? So that's the color I want, all right? And I didn't use titanium because it made it too bright. I'm going to start in with the fan brush like this. All right, now I'm going to come on top. Now here, so I'm going to come on top of the, let's see if I can make this work here. Come on top of this like this with our lights, okay? The light color is always on top, you guys. All right, that's what you've got to keep in mind. Think of a bonsai tree. If you're going to be doing something like this, think of a bonsai tree. So the, the dark colors underneath and the light colors on top. And it comes with in little clumps like this. And I'm using the full. I'm going to need a little more white with that because that's pretty dark. Let's just, try, just, let's just try some zinc white and see what I'm getting because that's pretty dark. Um, uh, let's try titanium in this because that's, that's pretty dark. I'm not getting what I want here. Okay, so remember, it's coming in areas. There's a light area and a dark area underneath it, okay? So there's a light area and a dark area underneath it. That's real important to keep in mind when you're doing that. Notice I just pinched, the, pinched that brush a little bit. So you can get over this, you can get through this very fast. Let's take a little more titanium because this, this purple underneath is dry. So what's happened is it's mixing with the, the with is wet, so it's mixing with that wet paint, all right? So I'm going to just say that there's this, here's our lighter colors, and you're just tapping it using just the outside edges of this. Now, let's just do this like a little bit lighter, okay? Okay, up here like that. All right, so that's, let's see. Now we need a space. I'm going to say that there's something in here. We're going to see if I can mix that. I can get just the color I want. Okay, so now if you get too much, like if it starts to all blur out and you lose your dark, you may have to go back and put the dark back. Let's just go back with a little purple and maybe just put it. You may have to put some dark back a couple places. Okay. Don't, don't be afraid to have to go back and do that. And I might just use another brush to do that with. But I mean, that's basically how you might put in a tree like that with a, with a, with a fan brush. Now, my brush of choice is this small little angle brush. I feel like I have much more control on that. Now I'm going to do a few little dots like this up here with some of the little, you know, little random um, flowers like that, okay? 
and I'm going to add a little bit of red to this magenta and white and lighten this up a bit just in the center here. And I want this to be a little bit lighter and I think the thing of it is, John, I have to dry that. Why don't you talk about something, John? I'm going to dry <laughs> this area. Okay. Oh, I can. let me put this aside. I'm going to show you how to glaze real quick, okay? Oh, let's do that. Let, let's do that. But that has to dry and I still, because that's too thick. And that's the biggest mistake people make is they don't dry. I see that all the time. I can tell they've been painting something and they haven't dried. All right, so here's some white like that. Here's a white strip like this. And then we've got some light pink. So let's just talk about that. Can you glaze over something that's wet? No. Impossible. No. So they, that whatever the surface is, it's got to be dry. So if I wanted to glaze, for instance, purple over this... Um, over this pink, which is light, I just put some water on and you see there's this very translucent color, right, over the pink. So you can glaze over anything that's lighter than itself. Here's a little ultramarine blue with water, okay? And now, here's the trick. Golden paints, from what I understand, you can use a lot more water with them and have the paint still stick. Some of your inexpensive acrylics um, the paint will not bind to the other paint, just won't, which is why you have to use a glazing medium. All right, a glazing medium is a polymer medium, and you can use almost 100% pure glazing medium, so it's whatever little bit of paint you put to it, and it's going to stain or dye it. All right, now here's the ultramarine blue. See, that's the color, like that, over the pink, like that. Now, over white, it would look different, okay. Um, would, uh, all right, so that's, that's ultramarine blue. Um, here's a little phthalo blue. Some colors are more translucent than others. You see that? But it's very soft. You see how soft that is? As opposed to just painting phthalo blue, see? Or phthalo blue with white. You know, like that. See? I mean, that, that's a different look. It's, it's a very watercolory, translucent look. I mean, this is a look too, but this is more opaque. So glazing has its place, and when colors dry, you can keep glazing on top of them and change it very subtly. And also glazing is good for shadows, all kinds of stuff. So that's what we mean by glazing. And when this white dries, we'll, um, we'll show you what that does, all right? So now I'm going to just go ahead. See, this is very thick and tacky. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put some of my dark back here because I'm not liking the way this looks right here. And I'm just going to show you. We're going to just... There we go. Let's just fix this because I'm not happy with that at all. All right, because a little bit of dark paint, that's too much. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to fix the center of this tree. I'm going to dry that real quick. And John, if you have something you want to share with people, that would be good. In the meantime, I'm going to dry this, okay? Right. Got you covered. All right, while she dries that, uh, somebody asked what our port of calls are. Um, I know we have Haiti. I'm going to visit Andrew in Haiti. We've got St. Martin, uh, Kit Island, Bahamas, and I don't remember the other one. There's two more on the second week. Um, the second week we're basically going to be focusing mainly on working and we just get off the porch and just, just look around and get back on the ship because we want to keep up with, uh, we have a lot of work that we want to get done. That's what we do on these cruises. We do not take really a vacation. We have a lot of work that we need to get done that we don't get during get done while we're here because we're always filming. Um, she's painting, I'm filming and editing and putting them up on the website. So we have all the other work that needs to get done that we're trying to, we take cruises on to get that other work done. It's just a nice way to get out of the studio so she can't paint here in the studio and she's restricted on how many paints she can take and things. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to get some real work done as she continues on we have some new lessons she's designing and you're back i think are you talking about some of the new lessons we designed i'm talking about what we do on the cruises but you, you yeah. got new lessons. Uh, check yeah, this one about. out you guys like this i love that one that's my favorite that's a that's a new introduction to wave and water that's going to be on our website for our members soon as a, for both the wave and water masterclass and the other one introduction to wave and water okay this is really cool right and I like the purple shadows on the beach and now that. Our Wave and Water Masterclass isn't for people who are masters at waters, but who want water, but painting water, but want to get good at it. Here's a new lily. This is a painting that we're going to be featuring um, on YouTube while we're gone. Uh, this, this 
cool painting of a lily. And uh, again, do you see all the glazing that's happening in this? Well, that's a good example of glazing right here on this flower, isn't there? Right, that whole thing's all This glazed. whole thing is all about glazing. I don't know why I'm bothering showing you that. This is exactly what I'm talking about, glazing. This was called, uh, and uh, you know, one of the nice things about it, one of our members sent this in. Uh, she's, she, she painted it, and then all her water was scooped up like this, curved. Everything was curved. And in um, her critique, I just explained how all this water has to be level. Um, it's just stuff that you can, you know, think that benefits personal art coaching. All right, so let's come back here with some white now um, and a little bit of magenta and see if we can't get some lighter uh, colors, flowers on here. All right, so we're going to just tap this on using an angle brush. Um, one of the problems that... Um, that I'm, I'm seeing when people do flowers is these are not stars. These are not spots in the sky. If there's a dark side to the, all these flowers or bushes or trees or whatever you're painting, and a light side. The dark is always underneath. Think about that. I mean, you can see it in the photograph, can you? Come on, zoom real in on the photograph. Sorry, I can't explain this enough. See, light, dark, light, dark, 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 light. See that? See, the dark's underneath. The same thing here. Uh, the dark is underneath. And so when you're painting, um, when you're painting, you don't want to just put these light colors just any old place. There's a, you know, we have a plan where we need them. All right. And uh, let's see. So the light colors are on top and the darker colors are down here on the bottom like that little dots. Okay. And we're going to come over here like this. They have to put out some more magenta. I've got a fan going on me. And um, it's uh, drying out my paints, too. See, so, let's see. Where's that water mister? I have a thought. Do you guys ever mist your paints? You get this, particularly in hot climates, a little water mister like that. Mist them. Mist your paints. All right, so let's come back to that lighter purpley color. Okay. And... Uh, Let's just add a little bit of that to this. Come on, some lighter, on, dark underneath, lighter on top. See that? Even that dark red is darker than the light purple. See that? So, I mean, there's a, there's a plan to this. The light stuff goes on top. And you break it up by patches of dark, like that. Now, if, on a bigger painting, I think a fan brush might work a little better than this small one. But in any event, and if you've got you carried away, you can put a few little dark spots back. Don't lose all your dark. Okay? Now, there's that tree. Kind of cool, right? Now, what did we happen here? Oh, yeah, that was that fan stuff. Here, let's, uh, let's come out here like this and put some little bit of red under here like this. Out here on this one. Okay, well, there we go. Like that. All right, putting that out here. Now we're going to change colors. We're going to go into a naphtha crimson. It's our darker red, changing colors. Want to come over here like this and start tapping this on top of our um, uh, the, this dark area here. This is our kind of red azaleas. And uh, let's see, where's my small little tiny brush here? We did a bit of packing today. Here, I want a little smaller brush. We did a bit of packing today, and we packed our art suitcase with everything. And one of the things we do when we take our paints on the road, you guys, is we, um, we take a tarp or something so that, look, most places, if you're on vacation, they're happy to have you. You could go, like, for instance, in Hawaii or something. You can go paint, you know, probably even in the lobby of the garden of the hotel or wherever you are. But you start getting acrylic paint on the floor, and they're just not so thrilled with you anymore. They're looking at you going, I don't know, lady, you want to move. But if you'll put like an old shower curtain down, or maybe a new one, a little shower curtain liner down, just something like that, right? Um, what you're going to find is that their people are going to be a lot more receptive to having you in their lobby or wherever, in their gardens painting, if they don't think, then they kind of like it. You know, they're going, oh, that's so nice. And even on cruise ships, they'll let us paint. They're very happy. That they want the guests happy. They'll let us paint. At least they will on Royal Caribbean. Um, you know, I've always had good success with them letting us paint, coming up there with our stuff on a kind of a down day. Now, sometimes if the if the weather's a little choppy, it's a bit of a challenge to paint. You know, you know, just um, you might want to do more of an abstract. That you, day. you know, that's you know, might be it's just you just don't. 
It's like trying to read in the car, you know what I mean? Some people can read in the car, but you know, it's, and other people are just not that great at reading in the car. Okay, so I've got that color here. So I'm going to take a little of this color with a little bit of um, um, mixing white now, which will lighten it up slightly. And I'm just going to start adding some little bits of red coming down here into my pond like this, just sort of miscellaneous red coming down here like this. And just a uh, little bit. The, the, the mixing white, what it does is it won't turn it pink on you. The mixing white is uh, will lighten up your color without your red without turning pink. It'll just lighten it up. So, all right, so we're coming down here like this. I'm going to just start just absently putting in these colors. And don't, don't worry too much if you have it perfect. It's okay if you don't. You can, this all can be layered. Just pull everything kind of down. Now we're going to change colors again and take some white white and go into this, this color. Now I want to do some pink flowers over here. I'm just using the corner of almost peach pink. You know, it doesn't really matter. Pick a color. But uh, Thank you, Joanne, for the donation. We greatly appreciate that. Oh, thanks very much. Gosh, we really appreciate that. That's so sweet. So anyway, they'll let you do it, but it, it, it's nice to... Um, to, you know, put something on the table so that you're not messing. You know, don't make more work for people because then they're not so thrilled with that. All right, so more of a little bit of magenta with that and white and titanium white. We're going to make a different color pink. I'm going to come over here like this, start changing pinks again, and just change these flowers um, back into the magenta like that and come up into here like this. We have azaleas in Houston. They, 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 they're all gone now. Just, they, they bloom in our house they had a, a, for about two weeks and they're gone. But I think as other places in the south, they stay, they stay a lot longer. The azaleas will bloom for a lot longer. They don't bloom all that long for, for us, but they're, um, they do have them. And they have azalea trails in Houston where you can drive around and uh, look at all the azaleas. Now, right, now we're going to go into some darker pink here. You know, this is the darker magenta, sort of the bottom of this. Going to make sure I've got this darker. Some of these flowers underneath here. And how about some white now? Let's just come back up here with some white. Still wet. Going to say that there's some white, lighter pink flowers up here on top. Like that. Just try to vary the height of the top. That's real important too. Just kind of vary the height of what you've got here. I think that's kind of pretty. Now, I've got some of that color in here. Let's just put it down into our water like this. Okay. Maybe over in here, we're going to put some of that water color in. Now here's a little magenta. We're going to add some of this color. Let's start just pulling it down into the water. Let me just bring this up so you can see it. And uh, now I'm going to take a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of cad red medium, okay. I'm going to kind of come up here and brighten up a couple of these. Let's see if that will make much difference here. Tiny bit of cad red on this, just on the tip of the top of this. Brighten this up. Cad red is slightly brighter and will make a difference. Okay, and I might even take a little bit of zinc white and cad red. We'll see what we do. I want something a little bit lighter on the top of this. Top of these flowers like that. And also because red is one of those colors that you can give it a couple of coats with, the second coat, if you do that as your top highlight color, it will look brighter. Okay. Now let's let's start some over here. Uh, I'd start. like to thank Lady Fair for the donation. Greatly appreciate it. It's always. Oh gosh, you guys, you guys! I thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Apparently, I want to make sure we have enough money to get home. That really, I'm <laughs> telling you. Though we um, went to we went to Costco today to get our gas, and it, the price had dropped since we did our last um, um, our last show. We paid last eight. last show, it had dropped down to two twelve. Yep. Okay, I thought that was interesting. You know, it's just so arbitrary this stuff. You just wonder about it, don't you? Just it's so, all done with mirrors, smoke and mirrors. I mean, it just all right. So we've got some of this this red color down in here like that on this side now. Let's pull some of this red into our water, like that. Just everything's going down. I think I want to put some down this way. Okay. 
All right, good. Now maybe back into a little bit of the pink colors in here toward the center, magentas. Everything's getting pulled down. Okay, so how, where are we at? Where are we at right here now? Maybe a little bit of the um, some red coming this way in the water. How about over here like that? And ooh, let's do some brighter pink here. I'm just wandering around making different pinks and seeing where I could make them. See, this is layered on top of this one now. All these colors are layered. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do reflections in the water, but this is a very basic, simple way to do it. Works pretty well. We're not using any blending medium. We're not trying to blend all these colors together. We're just very easily putting in these kind of nice um, different tones of pinks and reds from the... Um, that, that are kind of up here in our flowers, okay, like that. So if you've got some of that color up here, we will put a little back up in here like that. Flat. Lighten up some of this right like that in the water, just overlapping, very holding the brush pretty flat and barely touching it. So I say that's what I'm doing here like that, okay. Now I'm going to just step out of that for a minute. Here's the deal with green and red are on the color wheel. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. So if you don't draw in between, you sort of get mud. All right, so this is really important. So if you're doing a painting that's got a lot of green and red in it, you want to make sure that you're drawing between layers of applying that. Now I'm back into my greens again, phthalo blue and a little bit of yellow oxide and a little bit of white. Okay, and I've got this sort of blue-green color. You put a little magenta with it and tone it down. Okay, and I'm just going to come along here like this, kind of almost a shadow color, a little bit of more yellow oxide to it almost like a shadow color and I'm going to make a little darker color under here on this side. Remember this is all grass in here and then I'll come into my um, pond with this same blue color and bring it down into here like this. This is where these, this is where this, these paintings get so pretty. All right, now let's do the same thing over here. A little bit more of the you know, yellow oxide. Let's just do the same thing over here and bring some of this color down on this side. All right, and, and I like a little in here too, like just barely touching that. This red's pretty dry, so I can get away with that, okay? Now, I might just take some mixing white, or like your zinc white, and add to that and lighten that green up. Now what happens? Uh, not, not, nothing happened, it didn't show up enough. All right, let's see if I got something a little lighter here. Okay, now it didn't lighten up, so I'm gonna use titanium, okay? Because that didn't lighten up for me, here we go. Here, see what the titanium did? The, the mixing white didn't do much, but the titanium lightened up the grass. I want the grass a little bit lighter up here in front. Put a little more yellow with it. Now, going to change it a bit again. Just this cad yellow medium. You can get so if you get 50 different colors of green in this picture if you're playing with it right. Lots of colors of green, and the grass gets really pretty because you keep overlapping it. Now, what do you do here? You come back over here like that and bring a little into the water, see, like that, maybe over some of this, kind of soften it like that. If I'm doing that right there, then I'll put a little of this green up in here, maybe like that, so that, you know, it's kind of melting in here like this. All right, now, now it's all starting to uh, get, bring to come together. Now, let's take a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of phthalo blue, Okay, let's make this sort of deep green. Now let's add a little white to that. Okay, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of white. All right, now we've got this pretty sort of uh, soft blue-green color. I need to come into here and suggest that there's some plants in this dark area, some sort of green plants growing this way. Cover up this spot right here. Okay. This is my first layer of dark, but can I put this anywhere else? Does this need to be anywhere else? Would that be pretty good here somewhere? Maybe a little bit of dark plant under here. I don't know. I'm just looking. Would it darken this up here? Okay, now if I add more white to that, okay, you guys with me? A little more white, a little more yellow. Okay, a little more white. Now I've got a lighter green. That's my light's coming down from the top. So you're deliberately putting the light green bits on top of the dark green bits. Does it make sense? Okay, they're just, you're not just willy-nilly throwing in light and dark paint. 
Okay, you're saying the light green bits of yellow green are on top of the green light. And then let's come in here like this. It's just dry enough. Yeah, let's Okay, and let's just add let's just peek in a few of the lighter leaves in here like that. How about over here too? Is there a little bit of uh, let's see, I think I want to bring um, looking at my background here. Alright, let's just let's just um, Let's just shorten up our azaleas here like that. Okay, now we're going to just, see, come back up in here like that and suggest that this kind of goes in here like that. Okay, so we keep changing the, you know, topography, I guess, of our garden as we add color. Okay, so I've got that, and let's see, do I have any more? Let's put some yellow oxide with that color. And, um, Put some of these green leaves. So that's a little brighter here, like that. See those? It's a little bit brighter because it's yellow. Now, how about a little bit of yellow oxide into the same green we had onto this? And then what about down in here into our picture? Can we bring some green down like this on this side? Bring some green down. Okay. So see, it's almost done. I mean, do you see how we're kind of doing? I, mean, I think you do. You can kind of see how we're doing it. Here's a little yellow oxide on the bank um, coming up here on the bank. Um, just tap it on here like that on the top of the bank. And maybe I'll make, take, take some of this blue and suggest a, a, like a, a curve here, right here like that going into the water. Say so say that bank's curving. So kind of thin thin out this line here, so it's not so so much. Now what I want to change here is um, I want to keep adding the pink here like this, and change this a little bit and add some more of this. Kind of tie all this together. I want all the pink sort of tied together. And then tap it into that green here like that a little bit just. Barely touch it and tap some of that in here. Here's a little bit more of the red coming this way. Kind of mimicking that. Same thing here. Come back here with a little bit more color in this one. Come across our plant. All right. Now, I think in this one, as my example, I came down further with my... Um, so I'm going to bring some pink down this way on this side because that's, you know, still part of this tree here. I think I can bring some of that magenta. When I say pink, I really mean that kind of magenta. Maybe we'll get some of these darker colors going back here too again, our darker purples. This is where we're going to put in some of the darks. Just tap it in. There we go. Back down here on the end. I think we're getting pretty close to... Um, um, Another gorgeous painting is what I'm thinking. We're getting cl pretty close to, you know, I'm just going to show you. I want to just take a minute and show you both. We're, uh, here's, here's both, right? <laughs> now, I still have a little bit more to do, but you can see where we're going to... Now we're going to stop. start popping up some color surprise, all right? So if I take some phthalo blue and um, white and make, you know, a little bit, of, and put a tiny bit of, say, yellow oxide in it, right? I want more of a blue-green blue color. And I want that because that's very pretty next to orange. I'm going to darken this up in here like this. Okay? So that's pretty up there. I think I've got it in here pretty good, but I can kind of shorten this up, right? And where else might I want that color? Well, I've got a little bit of it in here. Let's get a little bit of white, lighten that color up. And I just want to show you what can happen when you can play a little bit with the water then. Now I'm going to play a little bit with the water. Just little tiny bits of color here and there. And it, maybe I'll put up a little bit in this grass. We have a question up here. here is, like why is the big purple bush in the middle not reflecting? Um, it's pretty far away. All right, it's, it's really far away. 
we're, we're exaggerating it. In this, in this uh, picture, all you're seeing is this bush. You're not seeing that one, okay? Because you're just seeing this, the top of this. It's really an absolute mirror. So we're even having it reflect at all. We're sort of lying. Does that make sense? It's really not reflecting at all. In, in, in real life, it, you know, we, we made this a horizontal, not a vertical. So in real life, it, it wouldn't be reflecting. Okay, so I mean, we, we, we might suggest a little of it, but there's, there, we, I wanted a little sky because that breaks up the water. See, here's the thing, if you follow, if you follow your photograph exactly, you're just going to have a photograph. And as an artist, one of the things that allows you, you know, being an artist, you can, you can change what's real. And we do this all the time. You know, when somebody wears lipstick, that person doesn't have those color lips in real life, but they put lipstick on. Why? Because they're changing what's real. They're wearing high heel shoes. They're really not that tall. And artists do this all the time. They change, they exaggerate, they change. It becomes, it becomes not necessarily real life. And the thing of it is, is that, um, here, let's just, I want to just, here's some lighter pink in here like that. I'm going to put that in there like that. You know, lighten something up right here. The same thing, I'm kind of running out of white paint. That's one of the things you've got to give yourself permission to do. Is, um, let's see, let's put a few more little white things up here now. Because this is where our center of interest is. We're saying it in this quadrant. So now I've just got a few little dots of white paint like that. Okay, like that. Just up in here, like this. And, all right, and then I want to make sure that I have a little bit more light down here in the water, right in here, like this. Coming down this way little bit lighter and just kind of everything you notice that I just as I keep adding color as I keep adding color now see I mean, we started we start saying we start saying on a second we started off just with a few little brush up and down brush strokes you know notice but as we keep painting and overlapping we get different colors okay yeah go John yeah when that was asked, what did what did she mean? Not a vertical, but a horizontal. Well, this is a this is a horizontal painting, but you notice that this is a vertical photograph. Portrait versus landscape. It's mode. a portrait, you know. Portrait mode versus landscape. Yeah. So, gotcha. I, in other words, um, I try to keep the paintings horizontal for YouTube because the thumbnails don't show up at all on a on a vertical. So uh, we will say, we will do a lot more verticals on our website, gallery because. Um, Oh, Again, we can, we can, doesn't really matter. We're in control. We're in control of how our thumbnails look and what, and what you see them, all right? I mean, we're Su absolutely in control of that. You're right. Susan would like to know, do you have to be a master painter to take the master class? No, you don't. That was the idea. I want you to get, you know, if you, if, look, when you take a writing course in, in school, right? Say, to, to writing, one of the first things they have you do in school when they take a writing course is they have you write lots of stuff, Okay. Because that you've noticed that the more you write, the better you get at it. I mean, teachers have known this for years. So our master class, on our Wave and Water master class, in fact, let me just show you one of our neat pictures here. This is a, a new one. Can you zoom back out? This is a new one that's going to be released this month, too, for our Wave and Water master class people, is that if you keep painting water, you'll get better and better and better at it. That's the idea. There's a lot of different ways. There's probably 50 different ways to paint reflections in water. I'm just showing you one of them, right? I'm showing you a very, very simple, easy way to do it that makes sense and is sort of fun to do, okay? But that's not to say that you couldn't, um, um, you know, the more, again, that you couldn't look at a different one, too. Okay, let's just... Don't. Well, I like the longer the picture, the, and I'm only showing you this much pond. Does that make sense? Uh, the, a reflection is an exact mirror. If you just flip this over, this is what you're seeing. So we're really, we're kind of lying to you about what you're seeing. You're, you're going to see very little of this. Uh, you'd, you'd see probably the whole thing would be purple tree, and that wouldn't be a very great painting. So again, we're, we're, we're doing a little... Artist license. Uh, artist license. And in fact, I'm going to come back with a little blue now and put a little bit of the sky back in, like that in a couple places. Um, just to suggest sky in the water because that's pretty, okay? Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things you can do. You know, you can just sort of break it up. And then, of course, depending on how still the day is. Now, what I want to do now is come across with some white, just some little white lines like this that are kind of almost the sky color and break up this, these reflections just coming across 
like this. Keep these level. If they tilt, it's going to be, look weird. But I'm breaking up, coming around the, um, the base of the pond here like this. And see, I need it more of a blue color, not white. Like that, coming around here like this. Not a full, not a complete line, but just in a few places, breaking our um, our water up and our reflections. If you put a line across the reflections, for instance, or for instance, you said that there was a put a little bit of green. Here, I'll show you another trick. Put a little bit of green, a couple of places on the um, on top of the up on top of the reflections, and suggest that those might be some green leaves floating in the pond, that makes it look like the, the, um, these reflections are underwater, that, that these are in the water if you break them up, if you don't keep them so perfect like that. You can break them up like that too. So I think we did one other one, didn't we, of reflections? We sold that picture, yeah, the, the one, one with the, the, the autumn one, right? Yeah, we did a really did pretty. upside down. Yeah, the one I painted <laughs> upside down. Yeah, the autumn reflections. I think that that's what we've done. That's a true collector's item there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add a little more pink here just because I you know, want to see a little more pink. But again, this is stuff you can do. You know, you can do that. Now, let's take something and make some of this red pop, okay? Because it's so dull in the water, right? that I'm going to come back and make some of this pop. I'm going to take a, you know, when I say pop, I want some of it brighter. All right, even though in real life, yes, yes, I know that they're going to be less bright. I'm going to take a little bit more of the red here, come back in here like that, brighten that up here, and maybe right in here like this, a couple of places, I'll brighten this up. Not everywhere, but just a little bit. Because that makes it sort of, you know, that's, that's pretty when you do that. And I think I want to take some of this red and bring it over here, across into here, like this. Bring some of these red flowers over this way, like that. Okay, I'm going to bring them over here and maybe bring a couple of these up higher. Just, just a few little dots here like that and change the, change the topography like that of those. And... Um, Let's see, what else could I do? A little bit of white and red, make some bright pink ones in here. Remember, acrylics dry darker, so you're popping along thinking you're doing great, and then you look and you didn't. All right, so acrylics dry darker, so we're going to lighten up some of those pink flowers in the front. And um, do we need to put any dark green back anywhere? Do we need to come back here and uh, poke a hole in a couple places, make a very dark green? Purple and yellow and blue will make a dark green, by the way, because purple is red and blue. All right, so see if you need to come back and um, poke a hole some of your bushes like that. Maybe come under here, make a little a shadow like that. Okay, these are, these are all little things that can be very effective. A little bit of shadow under here like this. Maybe I'll bring this out a little bit more here, like that. Okay, and I want any of this dark green in the water. Like that, bring that a little bit darker. I mean, you can spend quite a bit of time on something like this, or you can be done in, you know, an hour. Just, you know, do it, do another one. You know, sometimes you can overwork something, just do it and then see what you've got. That's, that's my thing, is to do it and see what you've got. Here we go. I want a little more gold up here on the top of this bank here, like that. A little bit more, you know, just like that. A little bit of gold up here, like that. Okay? So I'd say we're pretty close here, John, with our uh, picture. I think it's looking darn nice. And, and, and again, I think that that's our, that's our painting for the night. Um, we've got, um, if you're liking these kinds of flowers, um, this was another one of our exclusive paintings on our website. See where we've got the puddles in the barn and all these flowers. And um, this isn't the right painting, John. We had one that we, we changed it. That was the original. And then we had the one with the sunset. Where's the oh, one with yeah. the sunset? Where's, the, one where's the, the other sunset? one? That's, that's the original. And then we changed it to a sunset. So I have to show you that. While we're, while we're looking around for stuff to show and tell here, that was the original sunset for that one. Yeah, 
you know, um, that's the first one, and then we brightened it up and really changed it. So sometimes if you do something a couple of times, I don't mind showing you. Here's like, for instance, here's my original, and um, it's very, I think my water is very uh, similar, all right, to what I had in the first one, a little bit of the blue showing, some of the pink, some of the green, and the lighter colors. What I'm missing, I think, is some light colors right here in the grass, probably the, my biggest thing I'm missing, the light colors in the grass. And uh, let's take a little bit of that mixing white and see if I can't lighten up this grass a bit. Right here in the front, well, that's not going to do it. See if I have any white left. Okay, right here in the front, I want the grass a bit lighter, right by this uh, area here. Okay? It's ha is it hanging on the wall? No, it's not on the wall. No, we didn't pull it down. Did we sell it in the auction? No, we didn't sell it. Well, that's a pretty new one. It's a pretty new one. All right, see, I wanted the grass a little lighter there and then a little lighter in here, too. Okay, just put a little lighter grass right in here like that. Maybe right here. Just keep layering. This is like weaving colors. This is what I would tell you. This whole thing is like weaving colors. Then you can come back and break them up a little bit with some white. Okay, that would be the main thing. Make it up, and so you're not you're not seeing it. Not well, it's it's that size, so it's not little. It's eleven by fourteen. Well, you know, we'll have to show it to you when we get back. Or look on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. We've got a great picture of it there, and it's uh, that's what we started off with, and then we really expanded the colors on that painting. It's so pretty. I think you'd really like to do it. So if you're into flowers, aha, you found, oh, you found it. Yeah, there you go. I want you to see the difference when you do something a second time. This is such you a great example. All right, so this was the first painting I designed, and I really quite liked it, you know, with the wet road and everything, kind of the, you know, the fog and everything with the barn. And then I changed it to sunrise. I made it bigger, and I changed it to um, a mountain, mountain sunrise. You see? How cool is that? So, I mean... I mean, it's, they're all, you know, the, the time of day makes a difference on what you're painting. Some people might prefer this sort of more, you know, rustic, you know, everything's, uh, you know, kind of gray and it's just, you know, you know how it gets in the morning before the fog lifts, you know. Um, that can be very pretty too. But as artists, we have the advantage of doing so many great ways of changing your life. So again, um, think about taking advantage of, when you are an artist and you're thinking about this stuff because you're you're painting think about taking a little artist license with stuff it's okay you know you won't be in trouble everybody will like you still anyway take it so what would happen do it three times what would happen on the third time i'm going to break this one up a little bit a little green right there just break it up so there you go you can see both paintings i think i got pretty close to both i don't uh, mind the um the fan brush on this one you can see that the the fan brush gave a certain look uh, to the um, to the, uh, the the flowering uh, tree back here. Now, one thing you can do, and we didn't we didn't do that. And let's just do that real quick. Um, let me just get a little. Let's make my gray again. You guys remember this is the ginger standard gray for skies, right? Now come in and come in here like that, and allow for birds to fly through your trees. Break it up if you have to. Put your sky back, right? Like right in here. This this one, that dark doesn't make me happy. We got, we got to change that right there. We got to change this right here, like this. That little bit of dark right there didn't make me happy at all. Okay, so I'm just just don't think I have any of uh, the darker color left like this. There we go. Okay, but you know you can put your sky back if you want. If you don't have it back. Put it back. You know, don't be afraid to do that. Make your sky color, stick it back. Put, you know, poke some green back and something. Any more questions we can answer before we go, John? Anything uh, we can I don't see any questions coming up at the moment. Thank you. Okay. For oh, again, so um, I want to thank everybody that sent in their paintings this week for personal art coaching. I believe I'm all caught up. It's, uh, you know, I will still be uh, working with you as time goes on. And you, uh, on, even on our trip, so um, 
want you guys to uh, keep trying our new stuff. What's our lesson for the week, John? What was our lesson for this? What's our exclusive lesson? We have... Um, it's a fair question, and it deserves an answer. Was it the... Um, was this it week is the kitchen. Kitchen with the yellow hat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Van Gogh's yellow uh, hat. And uh, if you haven't been over to our Pinterest board to see on the student board to see what people are doing, I'm telling you what, we have got some amazing um, art coming up here on, on our Pinterest board, uh, on Student Gallery, what you guys have been painting. I got it. It got a hand it to Nicole East. She just did that Wave and Water one. We, I put it up there. Uh, we didn't have time to get it off and show everybody what everybody's been painting, but I think you'd be amazed at what, um, what's... Um, been coming up on our um, from our just you guys you know if you've if you've if you've shown me your artwork on um, uh, on Facebook or if you're a member and you've sent your artwork to me sometimes you say I'm just sharing my artwork which I take it means you want me to put it up on um, you, want uh, you, you want us to share it and we put it up on Pinterest and you sometimes you say just use my first name and we try to honor that absolutely if you only want us to use your first name that or no name, you know what I mean? Student of Ginger Cook, if you want us to just say that, you don't want your name, but you want your your art shown, we'll do that. And I give a shout out to our friend Christine the Riddle in the um, in, in UK who's been sending me great stuff. And I, Christine, I just put your stuff up on Pinterest uh, this morning, something that she sent. Um, so I try to keep up with that and don't always get it up there. And if I'm missing, if you want a picture, pit painting put up and I didn't get it, uh, you know, make sure, you know, just give me a quick note. I can't put everybody's up. Sometimes I just get overwhelmed with everything we do, but I do try to. And um, so we'll try to get that going. And John's looking at where the hat is. Okay, so you members, okay, you members um, of gingercooklive.gallery, um, this is your going to be, this Thursday will be your release. It's automatically set for release, even though we will be driving. Here's your Van Gogh hat with this pipe that will be your new re new release and also um, while we're gone this is our other one that will be released as part of our kitchen series if you can back out just to zoom back out just a hair I just want to keep saying that because these are fantastic with the onions and the ca and the cabbage this is all part of our kitchen series exclusive for our website members so thanks you guys we're planning on having a great trip and um, we appreciate comments likes and uh, Subscribe if you haven't, because we think we're a lot of fun. Hope you do, too. <laughs> we, we think we are. We think we're fun. Hope you're having fun, too, and hope you had fun with the reflections on this picture. Azalea Garden Reflections. Azalea Garden Reflections. Excellent. Thank you, Ginger, for another wonderful lesson here on YouTube. Oh, I see something I also have to do while we're, we're closing it. out, right? Always. I, I just well. Don't can you we don't you do that goodness. as artists? Don't you just sit there and say I want we a little bit? We can never say goodbye. I know we're saying goodbye. I had to put a little red right here. See that made a difference, didn't it? Uh, now I feel much better. So much better. And so much going, better. How did I miss that? There you go. I can't All right. believe it. All right. Night, everyone. Night. <laughs>